And what we're looking at here is low tide phase around a full moon, mid-February, in the Nature Coast area. And what happens on low tide phase, we got these rocks that are exposed on the surface, collecting all the heat from the sun, warming that surface, incoming tide coming in with some really cold gulf water down in the low 60s, are gonna cover these rocks. The game fish that we're gonna target today, the sea trout, move in and collect the heat right off the top of these rocks around us. And that's gonna be key to locating and being successful in late winter sea trout fishing. One of the keys to being successful for catching wintertime trout is definitely stealth. If you have a trolling motor, or like me, I prefer to pull my boat, I like to shut down about 150 yards to 200 yards away from my intended fishing site because I want the fish to just lay as natural as possible in there. It's just the same as in hunting, you know, you want to kind of blend in with the woods. Same in fishing, you want to come in with a slow, quiet approach. And one of the reasons why in the winter months, the water clarity on the west side of Florida is very clear because it's cold and it kills a lot of the nutrients in the water making it really clear so the fish can see you. Now today we got a little bit of a breezy day, not too bad, so I'm using it to my advantage to push in. But the setup that I'm gonna to try to fish here in just a second is an exposed rock that now has probably eight to 10 inches of water over the top with this high incoming tide. And like I said earlier, that those rocks have been exposed all morning. We have an afternoon tide, it's probably one o'clock, somewhere in there now. All morning long and midday, the sun has been beating down on top of those exposed rocks, heating the water. Now this incoming tide's coming with the 60 degree water. The trout that were lying all over this flat are now seeking the warmth and shelter of this specific rock pile. And the reason I'm targeting this one, earlier this morning we had an east wind and we had this key blocking that east wind. So it created a little bit of a warmth area without the wind blowing on it. Not to say that any of these different points right in this same area wouldn't work either, but what you gotta look for is the direction of sun, which is to our south, in relation to where that wind was this morning. We had an east wind, now we have an incoming tide with a sea breeze. So earlier, east wind being blocked by the key, south sun beating down on these rocks, created a warm patch right here. And we're going to see if there's some fish on it. I'm going to pull in here a little bit quieter and then anchor down. And I like to start as far away as possible from the intended area and as the tide gets higher then move in in increments with the tide. That way the fish that are staging to come in you don't accidentally run them over. Yeah, some folks use power poles or talons or other mechanical anchoring devices. I'm, I'm old school. I like my sea claw anchor. So if you do use the talons or the power poles, you know, when you get down, slow that boat a little bit. You don't want a thing doinking on the bottom, making a lot of noise, especially on a hard, rocky bottom like we're fishing today. How much scope you want out on that anchor line? Now, normally, you can have a shorter anchor rope, but something I take into account also is hole slap on your vessel. So if you got a shorter scope on your anchor line, you're gonna have more waves pounding on it. I let out probably about 15 to 25 feet on this, so it kinda lets the boat lay a little more flatter than tilted down in the water. Now I have about 150 feet of anchor line. If I need to move out a little bit or in, I could pull it up or I can let it out and uh, move in as this tide gets higher. So. Let's see if the fish are here. <laughs> 